Retargeting is one of the most profitable forms of advertising on the internet, and with Amazon, it's no different. Amazon gives you multiple different options for retargeting inside their ad console, but most sellers don't profit with their retargeting campaigns, or worse, aren't running any at all. In this video, I'm going to run you through how to set up retargeting campaigns inside your Amazon ad console, as well as three critical mistakes that a lot of sellers make keeping them from having profitable Amazon retargeting campaigns. One of them takes seconds to fix, and it's just a simple setting inside the retargeting ad console. So let's dive in. All right, so here we are inside the Amazon ad console. Now, all of the retargeting options we're going to have are going to be inside this option, sponsored display. So we're going to click continue here. And now we're going to walk through how to actually set up a retargeting campaign. So all of this stuff is the same campaign name, portfolio, start date, end date, and daily budget. We're not going to go over those right now, although I'll touch on budget later. Ad group name, I'll tell you how to use these ad groups in a second. Uh, but in general, you'll just start with an ad group name that can just have the date. I'll tell you how to name them better later. Now we get to optimization strategy. So there's three different ways that you can bid. Actually, this is one of these is actually not PPC. See this first one, PPC stands for pay per click. This first one's actually pay per thousand viewable impressions. So this isn't technically Amazon PPC. It's Amazon advertising, but it's not Amazon PPC. It's Amazon VCPM. So you're still running an ad, but instead of paying every time somebody clicks, you pay every time a thousand people have viewed the ad, whether or not they clicked. It doesn't matter whether they clicked or not. You're paying per impressions there. For most of you guys, you're mostly going to want to choose this uh, bottom one, optimize for conversions, because that's what we really want, right, is sales. These are more advanced strategies when you're trying to just take over ad spots and keep other competitors from taking ad spots. Amazon likes VCPM, so they will prioritize your ad spot if you do select that. And page visits, it's just optimizing it to get page visits whether or not that shopper is likely to buy. So we're going to optimize for conversions because that's the most profitable style. These other types are really for market domination if you have tons of money to spend. We're not going to use the cost control option. This is a newer option uh, relating to the bid that helps it keep it at a max CPC. So this is different than the bid. It kind of adjusts the bid based on your cost per click goal. We're not going to use that right now. Amazon's still kind of ironing out the kinks with that. Now, when it comes to the ad format, we're going to choose either image or video. Now, you can do neither. If you don't have an image and you don't have an a video to run these retargeting campaigns, you can just click image and load nothing, and it will just show your primary image as the image uh, but you have to make sure you check formats. Sponsor display has the most different ways that the ad shows up. It shows up vertically, horizontally, super thin horizontally, super fat horizontally, square, rectangle, all different ways. So you could check at the bottom of this. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see over here, we'll, well, once we fill it in, you'll see a way that you can actually preview what the ad looks like so you can make sure it looks good. But in general, when you're retargeting, one of the best hacks you can use, this is one mistake that sellers always make, is if you just leave it at the default thumbnail, you're not retargeting in the best possible way because obviously there's a certain message that you want to send if somebody has already visited your page or visited or purchased your product. You want to say, your supply's almost up, get your next bottle now or whatever the, the default, the custom message you want to be is. So it's best if you have something or you know, if you want to highlight a certain feature that everybody in the industry is looking for, but not many of the competitors have, but you do, this would be a great way to visually show that video as well. But if you have neither, you can still do retargeting just with the default thumbnail, similar to sponsored product ads. It's not like sponsored brand where you have to have a, a custom graphic. You, you can run an ad without it. So landing page, this is just where they're going to land when they click the product. You're going to click advertise products. If you have a super dialed in store, you could do this, but again, similar to the bidding strategy, that's more of an advanced tactic. Most of you guys are wanna drive traffic to your actual product page. Okay, then we're gonna select products to advertise. You're gonna select one, because that just makes it way simpler uh, if you're just doing one at a time, otherwise it's hard to get the data back. All right, now we get to the actual retargeting part. So first of all, it's gonna have all of these different categories pre-filled for you. You're just gonna remove all of those, clear it all out. And then we're gonna go down to this section, remarketing audiences. This is where all of the retargeting options are. So click that, and then you're gonna go down to dynamic segments. 
and then views remarketing advertised products. This is how we select retargeting people who have visited our listing. Now, if I click this drop down and I go to purchases instead, this purchases remarketing advertised product is how we remarket to people who purchased our product. Now, when did they purchase our product? This is where we determine that. So if I wanted to retarget to people who have purchased my product within the last seven days, I would select seven days. If I wanted to retarget to people who purchased my product within the last 14 days, I would select 14 days and on all the way up until 365 days. You have seven total choices here, 7, 14, 30, 60, 90, 180, and 365. Now you'll notice if I wanna do views retargeting, meaning I'm showing my ad to people who have visited my listing during this time frame, we don't go that far. You can only go up to 90 days. So you have seven days, 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. And the reason is for that is that people forget that they viewed a listing. In fact, I mean, 90 days, dude, by that time, I barely remember where I even lived three months ago, let alone some random listing that I landed on on Amazon. So seven days for views remarketing is usually the one that you wanna start with. But this is the second biggest mistake that Amazon sellers always make with retargeting is you think you know which of these look back periods to use. In fact, you don't. The only way to know which look back period to use is to split test all of them. So what we would do, and you need budget for this. So if you don't, if you have a low budget, make your best guess or start with the lowest one if you're doing views retargeting. Uh, but if you do have budget, split test each one in a different ad group. And this is what I was saying I was gonna come back to. You can, you can use these ad groups and each one can be a different look back period. And that allows you to see which one actually performs best. Now, when it comes to purchase remarketing, this you actually have repeat purchase data on. And I have another video on this. You could check it on my channel, how to look at your repeat purchase data. But inside purchase re remarketing, you actually have some data on that. When you look at your repeat purchase data, you could see on average how long it takes someone to repeat purchase. And if you have something that's like actually consumable, like a, a bottle of vitamins you know, or supplement, you know how long each one lasts for. So you can actually make your best guess there. But again, you really don't actually know until you split test multiple different look back periods. And a lot of times the data is actually quite surprising. So what you're gonna do is select what type of retargeting you want, views or purchase, then select the look back period that you're gonna set up this time. And then you're gonna click add in this purchase remarketing advertised products section. This is totally different. Purchase remarketing related to advertised product is not retargeting. It's not even remarketing. I don't even know why they still call it that. What this means is they're showing your product to people who have visited a listing that's similar to your listings, which in that case, you could just target those listings in the first place. So I, this option really doesn't even make that much sense. This is retargeting. So you're gonna click add. Then when it comes to the bid, so you can see this bid is actually quite high. Those of you guys that have been in Amazon advertising for a while, you'll know that in supplements categories, the bids start pretty high. But the only way to really know what this bid should be is to run the ads and see if you're getting impressions and getting clicks and see which look back periods and which type of retargeting is actually performing best and adjust the bid as time goes on. So starting with Amazon's suggested bid is not the worst thing in the world. You're gonna adjust that over time. So, and sometimes it's gonna really surprise you. So once you click that, now you've set up, I've set up in this case, purchase retargeting for people who have visited or purchased my product within the last 30 days. And at the bottom here is where I get to customize my ad. So I can customize a logo, a headline, and a custom image, but I don't have to. So I can launch a campaign actually without any of this, and it's just gonna show the default thumbnail. So see, check, check it out. Now you can see this is what my ad will look like if I load nothing. But if I wanna have a, a headline like, it's time to refill or try getting one for your friend or how about one for mom? Whatever kind of retargeting message you wanna add, this is where you add that message, that headline. Uh, and you only have 50 characters there. And here is where you would add a custom image. Like for example, the supplement actually running out or giving it to a friend or whatever it is that you wanna actually use or the specific feature of the product that people tend to really connect with that other competitors don't have. So if they're still making a purchase decision, like if you're doing views remarketing, you could actually win them over when they're looking at other competitors that don't have that feature. This especially works well with really high price products. 
Then you're gonna click launch campaign and you're good to go. Now, the third biggest mistake that sellers tend to make is not understanding the power of your repeat purchase rate and retargeting is very related to this. So this is what happens with a consumables brand. This is one of our brands in our portfolio. As time goes on and your sales increase, your A cost tends to decrease with a consumables brand because enough time has passed for the repeat purchases to kick in. When you're dealing with consumables, where a lot of retargeting works really, really well, and as well as high priced products as well. I mean, retargeting can work for pretty much any brand, but consumables and high priced products, it tend to work really well. With consumables, especially in the beginning stages of a consumables brand, it can seem like dark days. You can see here in the beginning stages of this brand in our portfolio, the A cost, which is this purple line, was super high, the sales were super low. But as time goes on, you haven't yet had time to realize the LTV, the lifetime value of your product and of your brand until time passes. Like you literally just have to sort of wait it out. You gotta keep fighting through, keep launching products, keep growing the brand, and eventually the A cost trends down and the sales trend up. And you you see here that we were able to get this product to actually $1.2 million a month in revenue. It's, it's only grown from there. Now, if I go to this next example, you're gonna see a similar trend where at the very beginning, this purple line A cost was very high and volatile. Then as time goes on, it trends down, whereas the sales start very low. And as time goes on, they trend up. In this one as well, we were able to get to $1.1 million in revenue per month because the over time, the advertising works better. The, the retargeting works better because there's more customers that have bought the product before. There are more customers to retarget to who have bought the product. And in general, people who like the product there's a higher portion of the overall sales that come from repeat purchases, which you can see in yet another brand in our portfolio. This one as well, we got to over a million a month in revenue. And you can see year 2021, 2022, and 2023. Let's look at the difference here. This is inside repeat purchase data and brand analytics in Amazon Seller Central. You can see this data, percentage share of total units that are repeat purchases. So in 2021, this brand had 39% of our sales coming from repeat purchases. Then in 2022, it was 47.7% of our total sales were coming from repeat purchases. By 2023, over half of all our sales were coming from repeat purchases. And that trend has only continued since then. So not understanding this concept is a really huge mistake because it can cause you to kill products early or give up on a whole brand early because you don't understand the power of LTV and you don't wait enough time for those repeat purchase economics to kick in for your brand. Now we have a whole portfolio of brands that we run remarketing campaigns like this for and we do these every single week. So if you wanna run Amazon remarketing PPC campaigns for your brand, but you don't wanna do it yourself and you wanna work with professionals, reach out to us by clicking the link in the description of this video and we could talk to see if it makes sense for us to do it for you. I hope you enjoyed that video. The next one, I'm going to go deeper into the different settings that you have to put in place to make these campaigns actually fire up, as well as showing you some examples of some really killer retargeting campaigns that we've done with our portfolio brands. But until then, see ya.